That's near enough six o'clock as far as I can tell by, by the, um, by the uh, eccentric clocks in this building. Right, I have not been informed of any fire alarm tests that are taking place this evening, so if the alarm does go off, yes, we'll assume it's a real one. Democratic Services Officer will find the way, safe way out of the building and we hope she comes back and tells us what it is and then we will follow her out. Secondly, um, can I ask whether anyone is likely to be recording this meeting this evening? That is not in order to prevent them from doing so, but just in order to ensure that everyone knows it's taking place if it is. No? Okay. Thank you very much. We move on to the meat of the agenda then, ladies and gentlemen. Item one, apologies for absence. Councillor Hemsley has given his apologies. Anyone else? No. Item two, notification of substitute members. Councillor Burton. Yeah, Councillor Burton in for Councillor Hemsley. Any other substitute members? No. Item three, notification of visiting members. I have been informed that Councillor Springate, who is not here yet, but is hoping to be here later on, wishes to speak to the item relating to land at Valley Park School. Ah, she has now arrived. And uh, so, anyway, she, as I was saying, Councillor Springate is, for, uh, is going to take part in the discussion on Valley Park School. Any other visiting members? I see Councillor Mrs. Hinder. Are you here for the same item? Yes. Thank you very much. Councillor Willis, uh, what item, please? Thank you very much indeed. I don't see any other visiting borough members. Thank you very much. Right, we move on to items withdrawn from the agenda. Item four. I'm not aware of any. Are there any? No items withdrawn from the agenda. Item five, any business the chairman regards as urgent, including the urgent update report, as it relates to matters to be considered at this meeting. It's the agreed members that we take the urgent update report this evening. I think that was agreement. Thank you very much. Item six, disclosures by members and officers. I have to disclose another significant interest in the item relating to Jubilee Square, High Street, Maidstone, Kent, as I am a director of One Maidstone, which will be a major user of the facility should planning approval be granted. I will therefore be vacating the chair at that point and Councillor Round will um, resume his role from last week for this, part, for this part, second part of the meeting in relation to that item. Are there any other disclosures by members or officers come to that point? No? Right. Disclosures of lobbying will be taken with the application when we get to them. Item 8, to consider whether any item should be taken in private because of the possible disclosure of exempt information. I'm not aware of any and intend to take the entire agenda in public. Is that agreed? Thank you, members. We now move to the um, planning applications and the first one of those on the agenda is item nine, page one, Harrison Car Sale Station Approach, Headcorn. Ask the officer to introduce the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, as described, it's a site on station approach in Headcorn to allow the site of a mobile burger van within the forecourt of the um, car wash. Um, essentially, it's a site here to the uh, north east of the station, um, a, a narrow strip of land. You can see it on the, um, on the aerial photo to the east of the, the main car park. Just to give you a few pictures of this site. Um, essentially a typical car wash, which you'll see clean cars sitting there. Um, site looking southwards towards the station in the background. Back the other way towards the main road. 
and the, the site layout plan that was submitted. And if you follow the mouse cursor, you'll see that's the proposed location of the burger van within the forecourt. It results in one lost parking space, but it's uh, a pretty small area set back from the main road. Essentially, the application has been assessed by the relevant um, stakeholders such as uh, KCC Highways, um, Environmental Health, um, no significant concerns have been raised subject to uh, the uh, burger van following the same hours of operation as the car wash and uh, being permitted on a temporary basis so its impacts can be um, assessed. Um, there is an urgent update to this application from Headcorn uh, Parish Council who reiterate their original uh, consultation response which uh, wish the, um, the burger van to be tied to customers of the car wash um, only. Um, as the officer has described in the report, this is uh, an, an unenforceable condition because you wouldn't be able to tell who was a customer and who wasn't. Um, but there is, um, obviously, the officer recommends approval, but with those two uh, conditions regarding the same hours as, offer, as the car wash and on a temporary uh, basis, so its impacts can be assessed um, uh, subject to the other conditions like uh, layout, uh, etc. So the recommendations for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Wynne. Right, I'm going to call on the legal officer to just explain how the public speaking element of the meeting works this evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a short announcement for members of the public, and in particular those who are speaking on an item this evening. As you've just heard, the item is announced by the chairman, and then the planning officer introduces the item. The chairman will then call speakers. When you hear your name called, please could you come forwards to the table in front of you and take a seat. To speak, press the middle button. You do not need to hold it down. The button will turn green and the ring around the mouthpiece on the microphone will turn red. You will have three minutes to speak and you'll see your time counting down on the screen in the corner behind me. At the end of the three minutes, you'll be told when your time is up. Once you've finished speaking, Please press the middle button again. The microphone will turn white and then return to your seat. You may hear some of the speakers referred to as visiting members. They are members of the council, but they don't sit on this committee. They also have three minutes to speak, but they have no right to vote on any of the applications. Thank you. Right, just, just before we proceed, Councillor Powell, as you've just arrived, I don't mind you sitting there particularly, but you can't take part in this particular application because you came in after it started. Oh, that's, that's fine. Thank you. Right. Mr. Norton, the objector, please. We needn't have explained it to you. I'm sure you know how it works. I object to a burger van on the eastern approach into Headcorns High Street, an attractive conservation area. My company, Wielden Homes, has been involved in trying to relocate the nursery school in station approach for approximately five years, and we are now in a position to build a new school on our land off Grig Lane, Headcorn. In turn, once the school is built, we hope to implement our planning permission for nine terrace houses on the existing nursery site. This is adjacent to the application site, just a little to the south. I'd like to make five points. There are some important deficiencies in the report. It fails to highlight that there is a likely amenity impact, not only on the houses on Station Road, but also on the small estate to the east called Knowles Gardens. I ask if these residents have been notified of this proposal. I understand not. The report at 6.05 gives the impression that the van would be visible within the site. This is correct, but more importantly, in my opinion, it will be viewed from the surrounding public highway. This is the very busy A274 and station approach, which leads to the extensive railway station car park, which is full every day. There is a wider harmful visual impact. This is contrary to paragraph 17 of the NPP 
F, whereby a core planning principle states, always seek to secure high quality design and good standards of amenity for all existing and future occupants of land and buildings. I fail to see how a prominent burger van complies with this clear guidance. At paragraph 6.07, under the amenity heading, there is no mention of the harmful impact upon the nursery school, nor our proposed nine dwellings we anticipate building once the nursery school is relocated. This is a material consideration that should be taken into account. This comment raises two further issues. Firstly, in many parts of the country, in an attempt to encourage healthy eating and to reduce the harmful effects of obesity, many local authorities are now seeking to ban the sale of hot food in the vicinity of schools. Yet here in Maidstone, members are being recommended to take a contrary position. Somewhat bizarre. Secondly, in due course, my company is hoping to build and sell nine terrace houses on a brownfield site that's station approach. And if this burger van is allowed, then it will seriously jeopardize our project and we may have to withdraw. Under the highway section, it should be noted that station approach has double yellow lines, but in all probability, this scheme will create queues on that road and undoubted disruption. I would like to see the condition with regards to any temporary permission here restricted to the minimum time of 12 months and not as set out on the papers. Given the above commentary, the harm outweighs any perceived benefits, and I ask that the application be refused. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Norton. Mr. Smith for the applicant, please. Colleges. Well, I am somewhat surprised at the last speaker. Um, nonetheless, um, it is a nursery school, and I hadn't anticipated children from a nursery school would be seeking food from a burger van. Nonetheless, uh, it is a proposal which is approved, yet hasn't been commenced. Uh, here we are with a uh, car sales and car wash site with full planning permission. And as has been mentioned by your planning officer, there are no policy issues to uh, allow this proposal. Um, certainly, there are no residential objections uh, at the present time. Uh, nonetheless, if the houses were built, no doubt you would have had objections. But we are in a position where there is a car wash and a uh, uh, car sales forecourt with permanent permission. However, we would, uh, although we did apply for a permanent uh, burger van, we would uh, agree with the planning officer's recommendation that it is a temporary permission, uh, and we would like to see the temporary permission as the planning officer recommended, and um, we will await to see if there's any criticism in that period. Uh, when we will be applying for a permanent permission for the same proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hope you will support the planning officer's recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Well, um, we have two local members here uh, who would like to go council around. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I have to say that um, the objector has outlined many serious concerns of which I share that concern. And to follow up for the applicant, it's not just a nursery school that's actually quite, quite close to this. There's more than 200 children every day go past that site to go to school. Many, school, many children in Headcorn go to school in Tunbridge Wells, Tunbridge or Ashford. They use the train. In fact, they have used that particular point, the access to station, at station approach across the, station on the, uh, the, the petrol station on the other side. They go over there dozens at a time, and it's actually become a safety risk already. To have a burger van situated right by the side of it merely exacerbates an already very dangerous situation. We have had a number of close misses there on numerous times. 
In fact, there is already a review taking place, which I'm sure the county member will, co will confirm, that there is potentially the, the need for a, a crossing at that particular point. It has become quite dangerous. For some time, we also had a temporary burger van there that was actually there without permission. During the week I believe it was there, some couple of years ago, I must have had dozens, and I do mean dozens, of phone calls complaining about the traffic problems because lorries were actually parking on the double yellow lines and they were actually playing havoc with accessibility in and out of the railway station. If a lorry was to continue parking anywhere near it because it wanted to use the facility, it would block vision entirely along the whole length of that area. It would also cause enormous problems with accessibility to the petrol station, which also has high peaks and troughs at certain times, often when commuters are driving to the station, whether they're parking there or whether they're being fetched and carried away. And those peaks would be serious between two to three hours in the morning and two to three hours in the afternoon. Any lorry parking in that road already causes a problem. Whilst visibility may be reasonably good, any lorry is going to get in the way, especially when there's several cars behind it or coming in the opposite direction because there's not enough room. We used to have a bus stop there, and for safety reasons, that bus stop was moved. And the bus stop is now actually within the station in order to control reasons for safety. So I think safety is a really good issue. Having said that, yeah, I don't like the idea of burgers being on sale to children. It'll merely substitute their breakfast, which will only create bad habits, quite frankly. I'd also like to point out that the existing practice, although it's not necessarily a planning application, a planning, impo a planning important, but the existing practice being used there, I frequently noticed a, co a large collection of rubbish. Now, if they, if they c can't control decent rubbish when they're actually washing cars, goodness knows what sort of rubbish problems we're going to have when we've got umpteen bits of food lying around. So, those are my views, but minded if we were to allowing this, then I believe many conditions would be required and any temporary permission will be subject to great review because I'll probably be out there every day taking photographs. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councillor Round. Um, if, if we are in that position, no doubt we can return to what those conditions might be um, if, if we are in that position. Councillor Prendergast. I'll keep it really brief because um, I fully support everything that um, my fellow um, ward member has just said. Um, what I don't understand, uh, you know, if, if it's correct, sorry, am I making your ears? Well, it's this thing, not me. <laughs> Um, the existing nursery, um, the development of the nine homes is part of our emerging local plan, which we will be considering in just a few weeks' time. Hope, well. So if we're looking at the amenity of future residents, and this will be severely impacted by this development, it's just so close. Um, I know uh, Councillor Round has just mentioned if lorries park there, it's going to be a problem. Never mind the lorries, I, I, a, a white van would cause just as much. Um, and there are real safety concerns there for uh, parents bringing their children to the nursery school, for the 200 odd plus children who travel from the station, the children who get the bus to the school in Tenterden. There are some real safety implications here that we haven't considered. And what's also concerning me is why are we looking at in excess of two years to mon monitor this site? This could be done in three months, six months. Why do we need in excess of two years? It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, other than that, I don't think I've got anything to add. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Prendergast. Well, um, there is an urgent update, which I draw members' attention to on the papers. And can we take de declarations of lobbying at this point? 
Anyone other than the local members been lobbied? No. Okay, right. As um, a number of uh, comments have, have been related to highway safety and traffic issues, I think the next place to turn is to Kent Highways. Brendan, what, what views Kent Highways have on this application? Thank you, Chairman. A lot of this boils down to the level of demand that this facility will attract. And I think none of us can be certain um, as to what that will be at this stage. Um, I think the concerns that have been raised are clearly very legitimate. Um, from the point of view of the Highway Authority, um, we're mindful of the fact that the applicant has stated that the intention of the facility would be to serve customers of, of the car wash, primarily. Um, given that uncertainty as to whether it will attract customers from elsewhere and what the impacts of that could be on the highway network, um, we, our, our recommendation has been that it's, it should be subject to a temporary uh, consent so that that impact can be monitored over time and the situation be re-evaluated in due course? I suppose the nub of my question really is, hypothetically, um, if Kent Highways came to the view that there had been a problem caused, that was a problem being caused and was likely to continue to be a problem caused, how confident would you then be that we would be able to take a decision that the temporary permission should not be reissued or become permanent? Well, we, we have to make evidence-based recommendations. So at that time, if there were evidence before us that the demand was causing issues of obstruction or safety-related hazards, then that evidence would be our basis for making a recommendation at that time. Thank you very much, Mr. Wright. That's, that's uh, very helpful. Um, Councillor Stockwell, I think you indicated, so... Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, well, I support what the two ward members are saying. I, um, I don't think there is a big need for this. It has got to take away in the village already um, uh, for this sort of thing in Headcorn. Um, so, really, it's a, 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 in a conservation area, in a nice wilden village. I don't think it is necessary. I think it's out of keeping. And if it hasn't been um, proposed for refusal, I'd like to propose refusal. Yes, I know. Um, thank you very much. Um, right. Um, is that seconded? Councillor Round. Right. Um, at this point, I would like to ask for uh, proposed grounds, please. From, from one or other of the members, or both in combination. Uh, Councillor Rounders, it's your area and you spoke first. Perhaps I'll turn to you. Okay, well, we've, we've already had the grounds suggested on, 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 on the basis of paragraph 17 of MPPF and also 617 on the basis of amenity. Um, but there's also grounds, in my opinion, for traffic and highways problems. Added, added to which I would also like it like it mentioned that it is not fitting within the conservation area. If we could okay. get words around those issues. Right, MP17, if I recollect, is relating to the high quality of design. I'm not entirely sure. I, I can see where you're coming from, from the residential amenity one. Well, I'm struggling with the high quality of design in relation to uh, a a burger van, but perhaps the officers can assist me with that, whether it's actually a relevant I think uh, any context for such assessment on heritage grounds would have to take into account it's within the grounds of a, of a car wash yes. and um, the significance of that to the, the conservation area. Um, I, I would say the backdrop is a commercial yard um, and I don't think that would stack up really. I, I think you, you may be on a firmer footing with, uh, a, with the amenity argument and uh, the highway safety argument, I, I'm struggling to see how within the curtilage of, of, of a car wash you could make the design argument. It's, it's very difficult, I think. But
when, when, when one is discussing, perhaps in the wording we can also use not just in case of highway safety, but particularly in the safety of children, I mean, that I would have thought is a lot more, even more pertinent issue. So, um, yes. Well, in those senses, I think, well, this is that you really are, would be looking at the amenity impact if it was and, and highway safety. I don't, as I say, uh, very hard to see how you could sustain a, a conservation argument. Mrs. Stockholf, did you wish to? So it's outside the confines of the village and, uh, you know, I would have thought that would be enough. It's, you know, it's going to be a traffic issue from the station with cars coming and going and stopping. Again, that would be difficult. It's a very definition of a brownfield site, a car wash, I would have thought. But, um, but uh, so, um, anyway, um, Mr. Wynne. Before um, Mr. Wynne goes on to that, I mean, in terms of what MPPF seeks to secure, it seeks the diversification and promotion of the rural economy. Um, I think, dare I go to paragraph 32, where is the MPPF in front of me? Um, which does seek to support a prosperous rural economy. Uh, this is diversification of a car wash. It's a burger van. It's limiting its hours, as set out in the conditions. Highways are suggesting a temporary consent um, to monitor those situations in terms of highways' impact. Um, and you're limiting its hours to the operation of the car wash. So I think it's very difficult to substantiate or justify grounds on those particular issues that have been cited today. So I think in terms of, I'll let my colleague um, comment on that, but I think I haven't come, heard cogitant grounds of refusal, cogitant grounds of refusal at this time, members. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Wynn. You haven't left me much to say. Okay. Um, I think the, the two strongest arguments, such as they are, that, that could be put forward are the two that you, you talked about in terms of highway safety and residential amenity. Um, I don't think, personally, I have, and I think the officer's view is too, none of the others would, would, would other possible grounds would stack up, and it's just a question for members whether or not those are sufficiently strong. Um, so unless anyone wishes to add anything further to, to the grounds, possible grounds at the moment, I'm going to proceed to a straight vote. And we'll, we'll see whether we need it in a minute. Those, those in favour of refusing this application on the two potential grounds indicated, please show. Thank you. Those against? Right, that's for all. I cast my vote against it. Abstention, sorry. Sorry, I should have taken that for free. Sorry. Sorry, Chair. Can we just get this again? Yeah. Five. Of course. Those four the ground, potential grounds of refusal. Uh, I didn't see Councillor Bolton before. My apologies. You were rather late on the off. off. Right. Those against? Okay, yes, that is for the abstentions. Two. Three. Thank you. Right, okay. Now let's uh, try and uh, solidify that a little bit more. The, the grounds of potential highway safety to pedestrians attempt to, 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 to you know, come to the impact on the residential amenity in a moment. Let's take the highway grounds first, because I think that's definitely the stronger ground, frankly, if you were going to go anywhere. Um, so you're talking about... Sorry? Sorry? Right. No you're, no, you're talking about potential risk from vehicles. Right, first of all, you've got your, you're talking that you talked about risk to pedestrians crossing into that site from moving vehicles. You talked about the issue, the issue of parking vehicles obscuring visibility on, on this important route. So, so the combination of the two, because customers could not be guaranteed to be purely from the car wash site, but you're talking about residential people 
traffic to and from the site constitutes, in your opinion, a risk to highway safety? Clearly, there is some risk because county highways were talking about a necessary um, temporary consent to test that. So clearly, there is some concern about that. So regardless of one's opinion, my own opinion, that could be, be a reasonable ground for refusal because of the concerns already expressed by county highways. But, yeah, Mr. Bailey. I would always come in with a but. Um, because that's what I do. Um, but one has to consider, and we've just had some training on this matter, yes. if you can come up with a condition that can mitigate that impact, and in this instance it's mitigating. Now, at the moment, members have got a recommendation for a two-year temporary consent. Yes. Members could decide that they want to reduce be, that temporary that consent. So yeah. if it was up for a two-year, members could decide, actually, that's too long, and one year might be appropriate, and then they could then monitor. So the issue is, is can you impose a condition to mitigate or monitor those impacts to a level that would allow members to grant the consent on a temporary basis? Yeah. That's a different motion. Yes. Um, you can't do that at this point. In normal circumstances, if, if that had been proposed at the start or, or a deferral had been proposed or members had actually moved that first, yes, of course, but you have actually voted, somewhat to my surprise, to, I have to say, to vote to um, reject the application as it stands. Now, you can't, that, we can't, simply change it at this point. What you could do is indicate, you know, but even then we can't bind ourselves, but if members are saying that they would look kindly on an application for a shorter period of time, then that's a message that we can sort of send away, but that's all we can do. We can't say we're going to change our mind now. Um, what we but, you know, if members are saying what, what is actually required is a shorter period of testing, well, then fine. But at this stage, at this stage, we still have to give grounds of a refusal of this particular application with the two-year, because that's what we voted to do. Yes. Sorry, I'll take my mic off. Sorry, Chairman. What about the scope for um, residential amenity for future occupants? Um, I was going to come to that. Your grounds of refusal, your two, your two effective grounds of refusal, one was the highway safety issue, in it, which is both safety to pedestrians seeking to access the site from off, who are not customers of the car wash. So you're talking about danger to moving vehicles crossing this road. You're talking to, uh, you're to, and you're talking about potential issues of highway safety caused by vehicles parking on the double yellow lines outside that site and obstructing visibility. Clearly, from the fact that the county highways department were recommending the temporary condition in the first place because of concerns about those very issues, that is a legitimate ground. Has, obviously, stands the reason. So, we can, so you can use that one as ground one. Ground two, we now need to explore is the residential amenity issue. Well, Surely there is scope in that because the Environmental Health Officer has also asked for a trial period, so there must be some concerns there about uh, amenity, no? Um, clearly, you could we could say that there are cons potential concerns about uh, in, in <laughs> residential amenity rising out of the Environmental Health Officer's report, and we feel that at this stage, the and members felt at this, feel at this stage the application should be refu uh, refused as it stands, because of those concerns. I, 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 I would say that it's considerably less strong than the previous argument, but you could say that. Well, you could say that. Hmm. Um, really isn't up to me to give you the wording, but, but I, I, I've given you quite a lot of hints here. Um, I... I 
it put, put in a slightly awkward position here because obviously I briefly turned around and said I don't think those grounds um, are sustainable and on the basis that it's, you know, the whole point, can you, can you mitigate the impacts and monitor it for a temporary period to know what the consequences are? But we're in a difficult position that members have refused the application without giving the grounds in the first instance uh, as to what those grounds were before we took that refusal. But notwithstanding that matter, you know, the, the problem we're in is that the applicant applied for a full consent. We as officers suggested that temporary consent. So I can't put a condition to say we think the two-year consent is too long because as officers we put that recommendation to you. Um, the application came in, my understanding is, on a full consent. And I'm supposing you know, members could turn around and say they do not consider acceptable for a permanent permission on that particular site due to concerns with highway safety and um, residential amenity. Now, it's not for me to put those minds, but, you know, again, I'm back to the position that you could mitigate to a point, but that's a suggestion that you could put forward. Uh, and essentially, you, we're, 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 you would be saying that you don't feel that the mitigation is sufficient and that therefore it warrants a refusal at this point. Chairman, we yes. have a resolution. Would members have decided? So. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That I'm trying to help you here. I you, know you are. Um, <laughs> right. The resolution. Right. Point one, I think we've agreed, haven't we? Which is on the highway safety one, your grounds. And on terms, and the second point, right, you're saying that, that you've. That residential, because of the effect on, on uh, neighbouring residents and other neighbouring uses, but this application should be refused because the, of, of, of the environmental health implications, uh, uh, which are, uh, in your view cannot be mitigated at this point. And that's all you, all, you, all you need to say. If we go into further details, the whole thing will collapse on you. Okay, thank you. Is it clear? We, members, this, this is um, going to require a little bit of work. Um, my, we, will, we will deal with that now. Um, well, uh, for, with a short adjournment, which other members may well find useful to read all the numerous urgent updates on the Valley Park School. We were going to have an adjournment anyway for that purpose, so we might as well do both at the same time.
one. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right, what we are suggesting, well, we've got some suggestions. Um, right. Um, the officer will read them out with that info, and we'll come to that question with the informative in a moment, and you can add that if you join your presentation if you want. Well, the, the first reason um, is as follows. Uh, the proposed development will cause um, adverse impacts on highway safety by virtue of uh, potential vehicle parking along station approach and will result in obstructions and impacts which could compromise uh, pedestrian safety, which is comp uh, contrary to policy DM1 part IX. And the second reason for refusal is drafted as the proposed uh, development by virtue of its use would cause harm to residential amenities of the surrounding area by virtue of noise, odour and disturbance as a result of comings and goings and vehicle movements which would be contrary to policy DM1 uh, part IV and paragraph 17 of the MPPF. Right. Um, Mr Bailey, you thought that we perhaps should add something in light of the circumstances. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in light of the discussion that we had, obviously there's a resolution to approve, members could uh, attach an informative to this ground of refusal, which would give an indication, and it is good practice, about how the applicant could potentially address this. Now, what you could do is, if you so wish, that if you put an informative to say that the members may be minded to look at more favourably a six or 12 months temporary consent to monitor the implications of these issues. That gives the applicant the opportunity to say, okay, um, you know, that's a way forward. I could look at that. And it gives an indication that members would be more sympathetic to a much shorter scheme. It's an option that members could put on this ground and that might deal with the issues and the discussions we've just had. Yes, the, the, the point was May, of course. I mean, we couldn't yeah. say would, it, we'd have to say may. Um, what if I, I would have, personally, I would advise that because it, 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 given some of the comments are made, it does not commit the council to actually approving it, but, it, but it, given some of the views have been expressed, I, I would think it would be wise. Uh, Mr. Mumford. I've sat on this committee for a long time now. I call it a long time, it seems like a blooming lifetime. I have never, seen us vote and then decide why we are voting against. I have seen us get to a point where we need to have an adjournment to get the reasons for refusal correct, but I've never seen it done the other way around. I'm embarrassed of what we've just done. I will back 100% the informative that's just been suggested that if the temporary permission is reduced to a year um, and they reapply. But I'm not quite sure how we do away with the objection that's just been read out because that will still stand. I take your point, Mr. Mumford. The simple fact of the matter is the situation is no one's fault but mine. I misread this mood of the meeting. I had done, have done this before, and on occasions we have not gone for the full grounds of refusal when it appeared clear that the meeting was moving towards granting. It appeared very clear to me from the debate and from the body language of members that we were moving towards actually granting this application. I got it wrong. I have never done that before, and I did get it wrong. There is no one else to blame but me, and I take full responsibility. So don't blame yourself or the officers. It's my fault. Are we going to add the informative? All those in favour? Yes. Of the, of the, con of the principle, and that... Um, the principle of adding the informative. Now, we do have a question about, well, I don't think we, no, actually we don't. We don't need to specify whether it's six or 12 months, do we, Mr. Bailey? No, you, no we don't, we don't. We, sh we do not, I didn't think so. Councillor Clark. 
Thank you, Chairman. I just feel that if this does go to appeal, I think it would set us in a much more favourable light if we have the informative than if we don't. Thank you very much, Mr. Clark. I'm sure that's true. Right, those in favour of adding the informative as previously stated. Okay. Can I ask the delegator just to drop that? In one moment. Those against? Oh, sorry. Could, sorry. Could, you, could you indicate again? Those in favour of adding the informative. Those against? Abstentions. Oh, and I be it remembered that Councillor Powell was not able to vote because he was late to his meeting. So that's. Um, Members, thank you very much for your patience. I will endeavour not to make such a serious cock up again. And you'll probably be relieved that you'll be, you will be relieved from this point, and it's not cause and effect, but because I have a, a, a significant interest in the, in the next application, the vice chairman will be taking the chair, which is the application on the Jubilee Square. It's not, I'm not leaving because of the last. <laughs> Right, thank you, Chair. Um, in taking over, um, I just want to pre-warn you um, that I have actually agreed a speaker. Um, and on that basis, um, it's not quite down, down as per the list, but nonetheless, I first and foremost ask the officers to introduce the item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an application um, to allow the use um, of the land for market um, for up to 128, 120 days per year. I would draw members' attention to the existing consent on page 14 of your papers, um, which already allows a consent on the land for, and you'll note, condition four for a maximum of 60 days in any calendar year. So this is effectively allowing uh, the doubling of um, the existing consent. So turning to the application, members will know it. It's just literally outside the uh, front of the town hall. This is the area here, historically used um, for market purposes. Um, you've got surrounding the site most of our listed buildings, our key listed buildings across the road, this building, Grey Two Star, number of listed buildings all around um, the high street and also uh, in this proximity here. Um, I don't propose to go into a huge detail into this application because it is set out in the report. Um, in terms of, you, you, you know the site, you know the farmer's market, um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that basis. Um, in terms of the, the key issue, um, the reasons for um, extending the time limit in terms of the market manager are set out in the report. As I said, it's already got consent for 60 days. It is required to allow a greater flexibility in the operation of the market to expand the popular farmers market currently operating and also to potentially allow, and I say potentially allow because decisions on this haven't been made, to transfer the existing market at Lock Meadow. Now that hasn't been decided whether or not it will or will not occur um, at this point. The key issue for this application is to allow flexibility and extension of time. Um, the issues for consideration are impact on the historic core, the conservation area, the listed buildings. As I said, it is Historic, its, its historic use was as a marketplace um, going back many years, and this is what it's seeking to produce now. The officer's report assesses the impact on vitality and viability of the town centre and concludes that it's considered that this will enhance that overall uh, makeup in terms of the shopping frontage. 
uh, and certainly won't detract from it in, in, in any way. Um, the officer considers also that the previous consent was rather um, restrictive in terms of its opening and operating times. Um, however, again, and they do suggest, the officer's report suggests um, um, just putting a 120-day limit on it without putting restrictions on time limits. However, it is open to members, whether they agree with that or not. Um, obviously, it's a town centre. You know, market stallholders need to set up and need to sort of make a business out of it. Members may consider they want to restrict the start-up times on it. Um, but that's, that's a discussion for members. Officers have concluded that um, there isn't a need for that because of its town centre location. And then there are many vibrant activities that occur in the high street. That's just in this immediate proximity where uh, pubs and such like operate and clubs operate too many hours in the morning. So on that basis... That's the recommendation for officers that there aren't undue restrictions imposed on that and that planning permission is granted for the 120 days a year limited by condition. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. As I said at the last minute, um, I have agreed um, a speaker. Before I actually go on to that, can I just find out who's been lobbied on this, please? We've only had one lobby. One lobby so. Okay, right. Um, so, it's, um, correct, me, correct me if I say it wrong, but we appear to have a speaker by the name of Mr. Ali Altontop. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But feel welcome to come up. Please press the button on the microphone. Yeah, okay. Uh, my name is Ali Altun Top. I'm running Lock Meadow Market Cafeteria Lock Meadow. I just heard last two days ago somebody bring to me some paper from newspaper photocopy. Uh, what I heard only, this paper. Uh, uh, a lot of stallholder uh, holder is uh, they haven't got heard anything like that. Last couple they they heard it from Tuesday. I speak to a lot of stallholder. They're not happy to come to hear all of them. Most of their objection, uh, objection reason. Uh, I'm objection is reason. My cafeteria relying in, in market, in market day. When I bought the uh, calf, we had an agreement with council in market day, Tuesday and Saturday. And they suddenly Saturday they moved uh, in underground, which is I'm not happy many times I uh, asking where, when is going to come back there. So in October. Now you see I'm faced to uh, market going to move to come to here. In here going to be a lot of noise around here or like that already noise noisy town. In nineteenth century town, what I heard, what I uh, read, or like that, 19th century, this town is going up, coming up, that reason going to there. Uh, I don't know, is maybe town going down, is it come to back or something like that? I don't know that. Uh, really, if coming to here, people is working with me, they're going to lose their job, I'm going to lose the business, and the market hall relying to me, I'm serving to Market Hall. If I close in down, Market Hall is going to be closed, face to close as well, or like that. A lot of amenity going there. Uh, Sunday, dog show, Saturday, like the tool show, or like that. They, all of them, they're going to be face to close in down market. I don't know, Lock Meadow Market is a traditional English traditional market. I believe it should be uh, everyone put the effort to a local metal market, bring that up, not closing down. Is the best thing is if we help each other, come into all community, come to together, how you bring the up local metal market. Local metal market is every day, used to be 2,000, 3,000 people coming to visit in there. Uh, from 2012, when first application we heard, a lot of stall is run away. They say, oh, uh, 
market going moving or something, what they're going to do, they're looking alternative, looking another council or like that, buying a stall somewhere or like that, they're gone, 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 gone. Uh, no easy, no much stall is left there uh, like before. I think best thing, we have to look at the market, bring it up, no come to here. I don't think that here is a good, good facility, toilet facility, parking facility. In morning when uh, market stall. Uh, Sorry, sir. I'm going to have to have to cut you short there. You, you have made some very valid points, and I'm sure we do. We have listened to those points. Uh, we only normally grant three minutes. You've had your three okay, minutes, but thanking much, you sir. very much indeed for your time and effort to come here in the circumstances. I now open it up to further debate, and I see already I have a number of speakers already. Um, I'm going to start with Councillor Clark. Thank you, Chairman. Um, historically, this, this area um, actually looked a lot more like a market square. Um, King Street used to be called East Street, and where the Metro Bank is at the moment, uh, buildings were demolished along that run where um, where Starbucks is, or is it Starbucks and Nero, and that, that actually came right the way across, and it, it sort of enclosed that part of the of the um, of the market area to, to create this sort of uh, market square. So it's, it's got a real history of, of market activity. I think it really brings something to Maidstone when the market is is when the stall holders, holders are set up here, and while there's always a balancing act between where you put retail in the town. I think overall, if we can make Maidstone a more, more attractive destination to come to, I think that affects business, all business in a positive way. Um, so I, I would um, I'd end, obviously a few people are going to have their, their view on this, but I'd like to propose that we go ahead and, and um, uh, take the recommendation on the papers. I see with, oh, we're already on a run <laughs> with a proposal and a seconder. Um, I have a number of other speakers, including yourself, Councillor Burton. Did you want to say anything? Yes, just very briefly, if I may. Um, we, do, we do hear the concerns about the, the potential damage to the vitality of, of Lock Meadow Market, but actually we've got to be, we've got to be separate in our, in our thinking here. This is, the planning, this is the planning decision only to allow for the potential growth of the market in Jubilee Square. That decision, whether that actually happens and its impact on Lock Meadow is yet to come. So this is just to say, do we think this bit of land should be used in this manner? And what, what happens in the future with the two different marketplaces is a, is a decision for another evening. So whilst we do hear the concerns, that's, that's not our decision tonight. So I uh, fully support the, the uh, recommendations as per the papers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Burton. I do have a number of speakers um, still to wish to speak, so I won't go to the vote until we've had at least a few more speakers. I'm going to call uh, Councillor Borton next. Thank you, Mr Chair. And Lock Meadow area falls within the ward I represent, and I think we're in danger here of um, forgetting actually where the town centre is. It's not just the area outside here. It actually extends um, across the river as well and includes the area where um, Lock Meadow is, including the vast amount of development that this council has permitted down there already. And I've got great concerns that that particular area um, will be, despite the work that's going, going on so far, will lose out as a result. And actually that the vitality and viability of the town centre, which is actually the, uh, in the summary of the reasons for approval, is not being supported by this application. So I'm afraid to say I will not be supporting the recommendation that's, um, that's on the paper in front of us. Um, I think we're, um, we're focusing, though of course the appli application is just for um, the area of um, Jubilee Square, I feel very uncomfortable um, voting for something that will um, damage and will um, uh, affect the residents who have put me here on this committee tonight. Um, so um, I, don't, I don't think this is appropriate to be honest, I don't think this is the best for Lock and I don't and I'll be voting against um, what's been proposed so far. I will ask the officers to come back at this point. Yeah, um, just on that point, um, I need to, and I think Councillor Burton's already made that point, members aren't deciding tonight whether Lock Meadow Market is transferring here. 
That is not a decision on the cards for members tonight. The decision that members are making tonight is, is it acceptable to extend the current 60-day use outside the town hall for another 60 days for market purposes without the restrictions in place? It's not proposing what markets can occur or cannot occur on that site. So, members, I do implore you that you can't take into consideration likely consequences which may or may not happen down the road which are outside of this committee's um, consideration. So I do implore you tonight that you don't take into account what may or may not occur in Lock Meadow. It may be on the papers to say there is an indication that that may be happening, but no decision has been made on that. And if you make your planning judgment based on what is likely to occur, that's fundamentally against the planning principles because you're prejudging what may or may not occur and you couldn't defend it because it's not evidence-based. So if I could just ask members to look at the facts of the case, which are a 60-day extension to the operation at Jubilee Square from the current lawful operation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Did Councillor Bourgmont to come back? Yeah, I do, because I look at paragraph 6.01, and the key issues for consideration are the viability and the vitality of the town centre, which we inclu is, includes the Lock Meadow area, and the amenity for the area. And I'm, I, look, I, as I said, I represent these residents who live down there, and, um, and they will lose out on having, uh, potentially lose out on having the amenities down in the Lock Meadow area because we will have granted the consent to have 120 days on this particular bit of the town centre here instead of 60, which increases the likelihood, again, you, as, as I appreciate what you've just said, but increases the likelihood for services to take place in this part of the town centre rather than in the past the town centre on the other side of the river. So that's, the, that's my, the planning judgment which I've come to, bearing in mind obviously the planning issues as in the report in front of us, but also the residents who I represent over on the other side of the river which also falls in the town centre. I just make the point in terms of vitality and viability. At the moment, there is no impact in terms of the Lock Meadow issue. And I think I'll repeat what I've already said. I don't wish to go into that further, but you can't make the argument there's a loss of vitality and viability because we don't know what the consequence of the market is. So you'd need to be very careful if you phrased a ground of refusal on that basis. And I'll come back. I'll reserve the right, Mr. Chairman, to come back later if that was coming forward. Okay, still got a number of speakers that wish to speak. Councillor Mumford. Yeah, I'll start with a question to the officers. Are they aware of the operation of the 60-day market of any complaints that we've had as a council of that operation? And then I'd like to come back. I don't normally ask to so succinctly, no, I'm not aware, and I can't answer that question, I'm afraid. I have to be honest. Uh, I'm not aware if there have been any complaints or not, so I can't answer that, I'm sorry. Do you want to come back? Yeah. That would be helpful to know, at least something that we could base our decision on, if there had been complaints or no complaints. Um, for the people that want to get nostalgic, um, yes, this was the marketplace at one time. Um, but in more recent history, it's always been Lock Meadow. We lost the animal market down there, and it is surviving. My only concern would be competition. I'm not judging whether Lock Meadow will move up here. Um, I'm just concerned about the competition to Lock Meadow. I'm not talking in favour or against the application, but I think we, we should have that in our mind when we, we make it. Um, yeah, I just thought I'd contribute that this was historically a long time ago, the marketplace, but more recent history, it was Lock Meadow, which has got the facilities and is getting back on its feet. Thank you, Councillor Mumford. Um, Councillor Powell wants to say something. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, th I think compromise has got to... Um, come into this one because I, actually I, I do agree with what Mr Bailey uh, was saying earlier on which I think might bring a smile to his face yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're talking about just Tuesday and Saturday at Lock Meadow 
Is there any reason at all why the 120 days per year cannot be agreed with a, an informative or a condition that they don't come up here on a Tuesday and a Saturday? So Lock Meadow remains exactly the same. I mean, there are 260 days to fit that 120 days into. And, you know, let's keep everybody happy. We don't need any adverse competition. Let, let, let's increase the facility that we've got you know, every day of the week if we possibly can, but not of the hindrance of somebody else. I'd like to be able to agree with you, Councillor Powell, and say yes, but unfortunately I can't. Um, I'd just refer you back to page 14 on the original consent that allows 60 days. There's no such restrictions on that. You'd be imposing additional constrictions which weren't on that consent originally. And at the end of the day, I think this whole issue is about flexibility. I don't profess to understand how the market operation works, nor necessarily should I, because that's not necessarily the planning matter. Uh, planning works in a framework of competition, and we, you know, planning is not there to stifle competition. So I think the market manager is looking for flexibility of the use. Um, you know, in terms of, yes, the town centre does extend in different ways. Um, in different areas, but the key consideration you're making tonight is would the extension of this for 60 more days have an adverse impact? You could put hours restrictions on. I don't think it reasonable to make the tests for you to start imposing actually which market can operate within that it, within that market area because there's all sorts of markets, Christmas markets, you, where do you stop? Um, you, you know, then it's the reasonableness test. So my advice is that we couldn't impose those conditions, and I'm sure the market manager would work and, and is listening to what members are talking about tonight and the concerns. There'd have to be consultations about movement and everything else. So that's not what you're considering tonight, but that's another process that would have to occur, as Councillor Burton has already alluded to. Thank you. Thank you. Before I do move to the vote, I believe I have one further speaker, Councillor Cox. Thank you very much, but it was as though I was actually speaking when Council, with, uh, when Councillor Bailey, see that has a ring to, when uh, uh, James Bailey was talking, because I was going to say that this would let us have the flexibility to cover the days that we have the Christmas market. That takes up probably the best part of 25 days if of the 60. Then there are other fates, fairs and festivals that we'd like to use this on. And I think that's what we've been told we are voting on, and that's what we should really restrict this to. It gives us the flexibility as a council to use that facility and the centre of the town, which is always considered to be a meeting place, a market. That's what the town hall used to be, I believe, underneath it. It was the marketplace for agriculture. That's what we are. And I don't think we should close ourselves off. This is only opening ourselves up. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm now going to move to the vote, and we're going for to grant permission subject to conditions as per the recommendation in the report. Can I ask those four to raise their hands? Against? Abstentions? Mr. Chairman, please can I have my dissent noted? Thanks. You can indeed. Right, that part of the agenda is now completed and I return back to the, to the chair. In this time, I'm going to ask for a small adjournment for a few minutes. Pure, purely for a convenience sake, comfort break. <laughs>